Uh, so today we're going to, the topic is a very simple topic. It's God's love. God's love. Now, anyone who here doubts that God loves them? Anyone? Okay. So we all know in some way that God loves us. So the talk is over, you can go home. <laughs> Purpose met, no? Objective, God's love, you know he loves you, go home. What's more to say about that? Okay, now, that's not what our brain says to us really. Okay. Because today, today, uh, when we talk about God, a lot of the youth that I meet in my life today, a lot of them, they say, yeah, we know there's something out there, we don't know what it is. Yeah, there is some sort of creator. Some say that we don't believe in anything. So we came out of nothing, that's the atheist position. Uh, we don't believe in anything, there's no God. So they demand evidence, demand evidence. Now, if I were to ask you, you believe God loves you, correct? Give me tangible proof. Do you know what I mean by tangible? You see my hand? It's tangible. I'm standing here. It's me, Nelson, nobody else, correct? I'm tangible proof, it's me here, nobody else. So give me tangible proof that God loves you. Come attempt. Give me some answers. No answers. You believe something that you don't have an answer for? Ooh. Okay. Okay. Very good. So so at least so. At least the family reminds you yeah, God yeah. loves you. Very good. Fantastic. What else? Come on, give me some answers. I'm, I'm sinful, but I'm still alive. You're alive. Very good. Very good. Who told you you're sinful? Every day I sin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but who's telling you that? <laughs> you see? Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna break down all these things of what we. Shama has holy thoughts. You think I'm a holy guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put it like all. <laughs> we're all in the same boat, okay? Uh, when, when they ask, you know, it's a famous uh, quote: When Mother Teresa was asked, they knocked on her door. They were doing a big evangelical conference. She happened to be in the hotel room, so they knocked on the door in the middle of the night and they asked her, Mother Teresa, there are so many definitions of evangelism. What is your definition of evangelism? And she said, very simple, one beggar telling the other beggar where to find food. <laughs> <laughs> so we are all beggars in this together, okay? Not one better than the other. But I want to know, we need to see, this is the evidence for what we believe. We are not an irrational people. In fact, the church tells us that you have to have faith with reason. If you do not have faith with reason, that faith won't stand. Because at some time it's going to collapse. Because we are reasonable people. Okay? Now, I want to blow you away. What's the chances that you, you, you were born? What's the, you know probability, the numbers, they have something called probability. So what's the probability, the math mathematicians have worked this out, okay? Okay, how many times, uh, you know, people have made love and out of that, you have <coughs> eventually been born. So what's the probability that you you are born. Give me a number. One out of four One in four eight. Google is out. One in four hundred trillion. 
one in four hundred trillion. Now I'm blowing you for the program. One in four hundred trillion that you are born. Now that you're born, anyone got a scientific calculator? Now that you're born, <laughs> okay, but no Google. But now that you're born, what are the chances that you are alive at this moment of, of time? Try and figure this number out. Try and figure this number out. 10 raised to the power, you know, 10 square, 10 cube, and all that. 10 raised to the power of 2685 million zeros. personality your personality little difficult to define but I'll figure that out later <laughs> okay so what else what else is unique physically let's say physically in your body what's unique the marks of your teeth if you were a skeleton somewhere by the marks of the teeth they can identify you yeah what else the smell of your skin did you know that Animals can smell your skin. They know who you are. What else? The thickness of your hair. It's unique. Do you know your one year is not equal to the other year? And you have the most unique pair of ears in the world? Yeah. So there's several things in our physical. Let's go to the uh, psychological part. How unique are your feelings? We all feel angry. We all feel sad. We all feel happy. We feel overwhelmed. But do you know the way that you feel it in your body and I feel it in my body are two unique things? Why are they so unique? Our feelings. Okay. So how many transactions? I know those of have told don't answer, please. Uh, no Google answers. Uh, how many transactions happening in your body without your knowledge per second? Forty million. Forty million transactions happening without your knowledge in your body. Uh, how many bites hitting your eye per second? Bits and bites, you know? How many bits, bites hitting your eye per second? 11 million. 11 million. Of that 11 million, your intelligent brain, your fantastic brain, how much is it able to process per second of those 11 million bytes? 
50. So we think we are very intellectual beings, but God has given us a body which is far more intelligent than us. Now, proposition. Say I'm an architect. I'm an architect. And I have built something for, you know, you've seen the Burj Al Arab on the other side facing the sea. There's a beam, they say, that's shaped like a cross. Cross. Yeah, yeah it is, there's there, the beam. Okay, it's shaped like a cross. Now imagine I build that beam for the Burj Al Arab. And now I thought, ah, I don't like putting on the Burj Al Arab. I'm going to use it on the Burj Al Khalifa. Can I do that? I have to restructure the whole thing because the shape of these two things are different. Now, if God designed you, we all believe there is a God, please. Yeah? Let's, let's come to that basic premises. So if God designed us so uniquely, he's got a plan and purpose for your life. A very unique plan. Nobody can fulfill that plan. Nobody can fulfill that plan. Nobody. Only I can fulfill that plan. For example, only I can be husband to my wife. Only she can be wife to me. Now I may choose to have other women, but only I have a role to play as husband to my wife. That's very specific role. Only I can be father to my children. I can be good dad, better dad, super dad, fantastic dad, but I can never be mother to my children. Only my wife can be mother to them. Only I can be that last brother in my family. Only I can be that colleague in the office. Only I can. So I have a very specific plan wherever I am. Do you realize that God has a plan for your life? Your life. It's a very specific plan. He's creating you intricately. And God loves you. Now, so we understand the reasoning that we are unique, number one. We are specially designed. We are privileged to be alive. So these are reasons why we should be grateful that God loves us. Now, we all we agree that God loves us. How many of us know, how many of us know how much God loves us? Any show of hands? You know how much God really loves you? Tell me how much. He sent his son to die for me. But what does that do for you really? It's, it's a thought. It's a concept. Yeah. Not even the saints. As long as they were alive on earth, knew how much God loves them. If I, now I experienced God in 1982. I don't know how many of you were born at that time. So 1982, I was 20 years old, so you can cal calculate my age now. <laughs> I was 20 years old in 1982. Uh, I experienced God in a very powerful way. Okay, and um, since 82 to today, I've grown in knowing how much he loves me. But I cannot comprehend the degree to which he loves me. 
what will happen to each of you the day you realize how much God loves you? What will happen to you? The church will not have to wait for you to die. They will canonize you straight away. <laughs> you will become a living saint the day you realize how much God loves you. So our journey today, which I'm going to challenge you with this, can we try to comprehend and to understand how much God loves us? How much God loves us? Okay. So we start with a story. I love to tell this story. Some of us may have heard this story before, but I'd like to repeat it. So there is a uh, an auntie we we'll call her Auntie Mary. Okay. There's an Auntie Mary who was in India to visit, you know, and she's a nice aunt, and you take her chocolates, maybe, or cheese. Once in a way, you visit her, or an uncle, doesn't matter. Okay, so Auntie Mary, you couldn't keep it to Auntie Mary, so you visit her time again. And uh, she's nice, you're nice to her, you visit, she gives you lunch, comes away. And one day you hear, now Auntie Mary has her own children, okay? Um, you've got your cousins, there's a lot of people in your family, you've got a large family, and one day you hear that Auntie Mary, this lovely auntie who you spent a little time with, she died. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Sorry. Sorry. You're feeling sad. Okay. Feeling sad. After a few days, somebody knocks on your door, rings your bell, you open the door. There's a guy in a suit. He's a tie. He's a lawyer. He says, I'm a lawyer. Come see you. What about? He says about your Auntie Mary. So he says, okay, come and sit. So he says, um, you know, I want to tell you that your Auntie Mary uh, left a will. And you're the beneficiary of that will. All of her property, she had secret properties nobody knew, nobody knew about. It's worth about a hundred crores of rupees. And she left it to you. <coughs> Never left anyone in the world except you. Now, how are you feeling? Happy <laughs> to but he was sad a little while ago. How can you feel happy? Huh? So she left you a will, 100 crores of rupees. She had many children. Now you knew Auntie Mary loved you. Now how much do you know she loves you? Now how much? She always loved you that much. <coughs> But it's only when something happened that you understand the degree of love. Yeah. We never recognize love. We don't recognize it. Our parents loved us. I was a teenager. Terrible teenager. I was, I was absolutely a gone case. Okay. At the age, age of 13, I gave up on God. Something happened, and I gave up on God. At the age of 14, I went on drugs. At the age of 16, I had a very wild life. Drugs, alcohol, you name it, you did it. By the age of 16, I could convince people there was no God. And I did that with all my passion. Because I'm a very passionate person. I used to convince people there was no God. Till in 1982, in an overnight experience, 
God revealed his love for me. For the first time in my life, I knew God loved me and had a plan. So we take things for granted. The love of parents, the love of siblings, the love of family, grandparents. We take some things for granted. And it's only when somehow it's uprooted or it's gone that we, we shudder. Today, Jesus wants to reveal to you that he loves you. He's real. He's not high up in the sky. He's not some something. You know. Where does Jesus live? Where does Jesus live? Where does he live? For you. Where does he live? He is in heaven, but he lives in you. In you. In every tiny cell, in the micro cells of your body, he exists. That's how much he loves you. We can talk about later about what he did for us by dying on the cross, by rising. Today, by the way, is the feast of the Holy Cross. What is the gospel? What was the gospel message? What was the gospel? God so loved, God so loved the world. John 3, 16. Okay. God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him will never perish but have eternal life. Eternal life. What do we mean by eternal life? What do we mean eternal life? What do you think that looks like for you? Live forever. Live forever. So you're talking about uh, when we talk about forever we're saying Yesterday, today, tomorrow, day after, day after that, forever. Do we understand that God time does not exist? God is a timeless God. So when we start with the book of Genesis, in the beginning, the actual word apparently in Hebrew, uh, which they say is a timeless word. A beginning where there was no beginning. That's the way. And an end, we say he's the Alpha and Omega. It's an end without an end. So there is timelessness. There is no time with God. They tried to calculate if you lived for 80 years, say an average person lives 80 years on earth, based on universal time, which is on the Big Bang, which happened say 13 and a half billion years ago, to now, do you know how much time you actually spend on earth based on this 13 and a half billion years? You know, you know how much time you spend on earth? 47 seconds. 47 seconds, that's it. And in that 47 seven seconds, what have we done with our lives? We made a mess of it. Because we have not understood the person who's created. When you get to heaven, what will it look like? All want to go to heaven, correct? Yes. I want to challenge some of you. What do you think you're going to do in heaven? What do you think? Come on, be 
me some answers here. What do you think you're going to do in heaven? Meet the ones that you love. Huh? Meet the ones that you love. Meet the ones you will be there one day and the next day what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Float around, you think we're going to float around. <laughs> <laughs> On clouds, yes. Oh, man. The next life. So they, they've conducted what is known as the NDE experiences. Anyone has known the NDE experience? The near death experiences? Yeah? Thing. And, and this is, you all can figure it out, you can please go and check it out on YouTube, like your videos. There's a site called um, My Father Robert Spitzer, um, uh, he's, he's created a website where he's put testimonies on the So they've, 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 they've interviewed about a, a so million and a half people who died, gone to heaven, hell and purgatory and come back and they have got testaments of what they've seen and what they've heard and what they've lived and some experiences are different um, but there are seven common elements to them, yeah? all of them. So we are not just going to be floating around in space and just doing our own thing, no, 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 no. Our God is so beautiful, St. John Chrysostom says as we celebrated his feast yesterday, our God is so beautiful that even the seraphim, cherubim, and all the angels cannot comprehend his beauty. You cannot comprehend the beauty of God. A lot of atheists say, you know, if God were to appear to me, I would believe. You wouldn't be able to stand in His presence. So, God is beautiful. He loves you. Cares for you, every little feeling. Now, what I want to do for you is how many of us have had an experience of God loving us? How many of us have had an experience? A few of us. It's okay. Now, what I want you to do is to give you an experience of what God, God's love feels like. You see, we have these five senses and God wants to communicate to you every day through your five senses how much he loves you. But the problem is that the block is not from God's side. Okay? It's like the sun. Whether you like it or not, with the exception of the clouds which come in between, but on a clear day, if you stand in the sun, you will get what? Vitamin D? You will get, you know, a suntan, you will get all the elements of the sun that you need, okay? You will get it. It's like that. God loves you. Now, number one, I want to challenge you with this thing. So, there is nothing in the world, there is nothing in the world that you can do that can stop God from loving you. There is nothing, absolutely. What's the worst sin you can commit? Kill someone. Murder. Paul, who was he? He was a murderer. He murdered Stephen, the first martyr. So even if you commit murder, that cannot stop God from loving you. On the flip side, there is nothing you 
can do to make God love you more than he already loves you. There's nothing. Because he loves you, period. That's it. With an intimate love. He wants to invite you into an intimate relationship with him. Each one of us. So I want you to have an experience of God's love. But to have an experience of God's love, I must create a space in this body of mine, in my heart. So I ask you to close your eyes for a little while. And I want you to think of one good thing that you have done. Really good thing. Okay? Something like you attempted to run away on a Sunday, you didn't want to attend mass, whatever mom called, dad called, your friend called, or somebody and said, okay, let's be. I'll go to mass. Or somebody was really in need of something or they were with an emotional difficulty and you listened to them. You really listened to them. Or you gave a helping hand. Or you spent time with somebody. Or you did something that was, you know, very generous. You gave some laborer a bottle of water, or you shared your food with somebody, something that you did that was good. Jesus is here right now, and he's telling you, thank you. Thank you for being here. You could have been so many other places, but I'm so pleased that you are here. Thank you for the goodness that you do. Every time you do a good deed, you are glorifying my name. You are listening to my spirit. Every time you are generous, every time you are kind, every time you spend time with anyone and listen to them, whether it's your spouse or your children or your parents or whoever it is, whenever there's somebody in need and you reach out to them, you are my hands, you are my feet, you represent me and I am so proud of you. I love you with an eternal love. I care for you. No matter what sins you have committed, I forgive you. I love you with an eternal love. And I want to make your life exciting because my life in you is an exciting life. It's a life full of joy. It's a life full of peace. It's a life full of enthusiasm. Yes, you will face challenges, but I will be there with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I would like us to keep our eyes closed. I'm going to sing this little song. <coughs> I just want you to experience the power of the song.
I have carved you on the bottom of my hand. I will never forget you. I will not leave you orphan. I will never forget my own. Does a mother forget a baby? Or a woman, the child within her womb? Yet even if these forget, yet even if these forget, I will never forget my own. I will never forget you, my little one. I want you to see Jesus holding you like a little baby in the palms of his hand and just holding you close to his breast. And you're able to experience the fullness of his love for you. God loves you. Accept his love. Say, Jesus, I've never experienced your love in my life. I want you to come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my body. Come into my very soul. So that I may know you and love you with all my heart. With all my soul with all my senses. Amen. Um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? God's love. We have experienced actually throughout the day. You know, if you're just aware, you get up in the morning, you take a deep breath. Okay. Thank God you're alive. You have breakfast, correct? You have breakfast. When, when you taste that toast or that tea, chai, for me it's chai, first thing in the morning, it, it kind of lights my body up. Or it could be coffee for you. Okay, whatever it's or, or juice, whatever. Just, just thank God for that. Because God works through your five senses. Taste, smell, feel, you know. Do you know, do you know the first, besides, uh, so when a baby is born, small baby is born, okay, just a newborn infant. You know baby can't see, correct? Baby, baby can't see till three months, okay? So for the first three months, what is the number one need of the baby? What's, huh? Touch. The need, baby needs to feel safe. The moment the baby cannot feel safe, it can be anything. It, it feels hungry or there's gas in the stomach or whatever, it got colic or whatever, it, it feels uneasy, it feels unsafe. That's the reason it cries. Okay. Loud noises, it'll get afraid. Okay. Uh, so the number one need is safety. Do you know what communicates safety to that child in that first three months? What do you think communicates safety to that baby for the first three months? 
smell. That smell of the mother's breast is there for the rest of the life in your brain. It's imprinted breast. When you search for a partner, you'll be looking for somebody that smells like a mother. Yeah. Yeah. This is unconscious, by the way. This is research. Okay. Imago therapy. You want to read it? Uh, yeah. The smell of the brain is one thing that affects you. You'll find 8.5 million people smelling like your mother. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to break up, we're going to break up into little groups, Michelle is going to break up as a group. So we've got two questions for the, for the animators, two questions. Uh, number one, uh, have I ever experienced God's love before? Okay, if I've had an experience, share it to the group. And number two is, what are ways, what are ways, or what are the, uh, what are methods or ways oh yeah, that we can experience or keep ourselves to experience God's love? Okay? Okay? So it's being aware. Somebody helps you. Somebody is there for you. Somebody uh, lends a helping hand. Somebody is kind to you. Somebody tells you there's a job. Somebody tells you it helps you at your job. Whatever is there, do you recognize God's and reaching out to you. When you go for mass, are you aware of God's presence? He's there, body, blood, soul, and divinity. He's there, he's really there. Are you aware? And sometimes, if you've never done it, I tell you, um, so I've done this with several of my people who have gone through several depression. I tell them, just go and don't pray. Just go and sit before the Blessed Sacrament. Don't pray, don't do anything, okay? Uh, you sit before the sun, you get, um, Vitamin D, when you sit before the Blessed Sacrament, it's like a billion suns. Whether you like it or not, you will get His grace. So when you feel depressed, when you're feeling low, just sit before the Blessed Sacrament. So there are different ways. So what are the different ways you think we can experience and grow in God's love? And be aware that of that throughout this week till next week. Okay? Come, so we break them up. And, uh, so the adults will go. <coughs> Okay, so uh, group one, 